Christy with the Chirp YouTube channel. Welcome to another video. This is another addition to my series on helping kids learn to talk. Today we're going to be talking about helping kids learn to share their opinions. This is one of the four functions of language, which I will talk about in a separate video. But in this video, we just want to talk about some very simple ways to help kids learn to use this function of communication. Of course, there are things kids don't like. Usually, when kids have language that is just emerging, when they're not communicating on a consistent level quite yet, a lot of times we allow kids to just push things away or just turn away when they don't want something or when they don't like something. This is a missed opportunity. It's easy for us because we don't need to do anything else except for take away that food the child doesn't like or put the thing away that the kid doesn't want anymore. However, this is an important thing that kids need to learn how to do. They don't have to be verbal in order to share their opinion. We also have gestures and we also have visuals that we can use when we're trying to teach kids how better to express opinions. Let's talk first about kids who are nonverbal and who don't communicate all that much. If a child is not engaged with other human beings very much or very consistently, one of the best ways to encourage this is when a child pushes something away or turns away is by modeling no. When the child pushes away a P, we say no. When a child throws down a toy, we say no. Not no as in don't do that. We are modeling for the child the language that she can use to tell you she doesn't want something. It's very important for our kids to learn how to say no and to have personal agency, which means the ability to take responsibility for things and make life more like how they want it to be. Especially for our kids with developmental delays and disorders, it's important to know how to say no. And we can't prevent our kids from saying no because you can imagine all of the people who might ask them to do stuff and if they haven't been taught how to say no, it's hard for those of us who just naturally understand communication and who pick up on social cues to say no sometimes. Imagine how hard it would be if you hadn't been taught, if you didn't understand social cues, if communication was one of your weaker areas. It's very dangerous. You could get sucked into things that you shouldn't be sucked into and things could be done to you that should never be done to anyone because you are more vulnerable. We don't want our kids in that position. We want our kids to be able to give a very strong no and we need to model that for them. So we model for kids no when they don't want to play something. If I hand my child a toy and he just walks away, I say no and I put the toy away. This is giving the child a chance to internalize the word no and what it means. It means I don't want that. This is going to be an easy word for kids to learn how to say. It's going to come more naturally because it's meaningful. We've made it meaningful. I should tell you that the kids that I work with I usually start with kids when they are nonverbal, and the goal is to move them into using verbal language. Most of the kids that I work with know comes very early in their verbal language development. I model it a lot, and it's very meaningful to the kids because it gets them out of an activity they're not interested in doing. It comes much, much easier than the affirmative yes. Most kids just assume that if they don't say no, they mean yes, but it really is an either or proposition, either yes or no. We teach that in a very similar way to how we teach sharing our opinions. We usually use visuals because visuals work in so many situations. So with our kids who are very unengaged, we usually use a verbal model. We say no, and we don't require the child to repeat it we just model it and know that the child will pick that up over time.
For a kid who's a little more engaged, we use visuals. Hooray! These are from the curriculum, the CHIRP curriculum, and my friend Jihei illustrated. She's a fabulous illustrator, and so she illustrated these. Here is the I don't like it picture, and here is the I like it picture. <laughs> I like it. I don't like it. It's just a thumbs up or a thumbs down. This is something we can do as a gesture also. Sometimes our kids don't like gestures. They're really difficult for some of our kids to read, in which case visuals might work a little bit better. You can also label them. I like it. I don't like it on the pictures. I have used these just because I think they're cute and they are part of the curriculum that I wrote, so of course I want to use them. However, you can just pick pictures online of a thumbs up, a thumbs down, a red dot, a green dot. You can pick a happy picture like this and then an angry, disgusted picture like this and they can be your I like it, I don't like it pictures. Once we have a system organized in place, we have the pictures we want to use or at least the colors. You could have red and green on a popsicle stick, like a circle of cardstock or or cardboard that is green and red and then the green one says yes and the red one says no and the child can have these around the house at all times and you try to get her to pick. Do you want a popsicle? Yes or no? And then she picks one and shows it to you. This is a very early way to help kids express their opinions and their likes and dislikes and also to answer yes or no questions, which is a very important skill to have in life all the time. Think how much easier your life would be if your kid would just answer yes or no, rather than totally ignoring you or just always saying whichever the last thing was that you said, which is a common thing for kids with autism to do. For example, if you say, do you want an apple or a pear, most kids with autism will choose pear. If you say, do you want a pear or an apple, most kids will choose apple because it's the last thing in their mind and they're very echolalic, which means they repeat exactly what they hear many times. And so they will repeat the last thing that they heard, whether or not that's really what they want, which is one of the reasons why visuals are so important. If you give your child something and then you say, is it good or bad? Or maybe you say, do you like it or do you not like it? Those are very hard things for a kid to answer. But if you say yes or no, yes or no, yes, no, the child is much more likely to pick yes or to reach for yes or to push yes back at you and show you this is this is it, I like that. Visuals are just the best way to teach these sort of concepts because they're so concrete and because they aren't transient. Words come and they go. And if you have any sort of processing disorder or indeed a hearing issue, you can't grasp onto that transitory stimulus very easily. But this doesn't go anywhere. I can still see it. In five seconds, in 10 seconds, in a half a minute, I can still see this. I can still see this. There's, it's still there. I don't have to process quickly in order to be able to use this to communicate. One of the many reasons why visuals are so great. I should add here, of course, you need to give your kid lots of opportunities to do this. When you are exploring new feelings, ask your child, good, not good. Make sure that your language is simple. Don't say, do you like this top? Say something like, top, good or bad? Of course, give kids the opportunity to comment their opinion on foods, on TV shows, on books. 
make it a fun activity where maybe everyone in the family gets a vote. Maybe everybody has their own yes and no cards or the yes and no um, popsicle stick things and everybody gets to comment on certain things throughout the day. It's very fun. It's very fun for all kids to feel like they have the ability to express their opinions. It's a very healthy thing for kids to learn how to do in a safe environment and to be able to talk about the fact that everybody has a little bit of a different opinion. You also probably want to discuss the fact that just because I don't like something like homework or greens doesn't mean that I don't have to do my homework or eat greens. We can find different ways to eat our greens, different ways to do our homework that makes it less difficult, but we still have to do stuff that's unpleasant sometimes. Even if I express my opinion, it doesn't mean that I always get what I want. So that's a little hard sometimes, but it's good to have these discussions with our kids. Use simple language, use as many visuals as possible, and help your kids learn to express their opinions. I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy, be safe, and you're doing great. Bye.